In this episode, one history of Central Information Commission, two composition, three tenure and service conditions, four powers and functions, five notes and references. Note one: the PDF link of this chapter is given below in the description box where you can visit and download it. Two: the models answers of UPSC mains exam 2022 have been available in Hindi and English language, which you can see by clicking on the link given in the description box. Welcome to Audiobook Gallery. Audiobook Gallery presents Indian Polity by M. Lakshmi Kant Sir. So let's start. Chapter 57 Central Information Commission The Central Information Commission was established by the central government in 2005 It was constituted through an official gazette notification under the provisions of the Right to Information Act 2005 Hence it is not a constitutional body The Central Information Commission is a high-powered independent body which inter alia looks into the complaints made to it and decide the appeals It entertains complaints and appeals pertaining to offices, financial institutions, public sector undertakings, etc. under the central government and the union territories composition. The commission consists of a chief information commissioner and not more than 10 information commissioners. The commission when constituted initially had 5 commissioners including the chief information commissioner. At present 2019 the commission has six information commissioners apart from the chief information commissioner one they are appointed by the president on the recommendation of a committee consisting of the prime minister as chairperson the leader of opposition in the lok sabha and a union cabinet minister nominated by the prime minister too they should be persons of eminence in public life with wide knowledge and experience in law science and technology social service management journalism mass media or administration and governance they should not be a member of parliament or member of the legislature of any state or union territory they should not hold any other office of profit or connected with any political party or carrying on any business or pursuing any profession tenure and service conditions The chief information commissioner and an information commissioner shall hold office for such term as prescribed by the central government or until they attain the age of 65 years whichever is earlier. They are not eligible for reappointment 3. The president can remove the chief information commissioner or any information commissioner from the office under the following circumstances: A if he is adjudged an insolvent or b if he has been convicted of an offence which in the opinion of the president involves a moral turpitude or c if he engages during his term of office in any paid employment outside the duties of his office or d if he is in the opinion of the president unfit to continue in office due to infirmity of mind or body or e if he has acquired such financial or other interest as is likely to affect prejudicially his official functions in addition to these the president can also remove the chief information commissioner or any information commissioner on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity for however in these cases the president has to refer the matter to the supreme court for an inquiry if the supreme court after the inquiry upholds the cause of removal and advises so then the president can remove him the salary allowances and other service conditions of the chief information commissioner and an information commissioner shall be such as prescribed by the central government but they cannot be varied to his disadvantage during service up powers and functions the powers and functions of the central information commissioner One it is the duty of the commission to receive and inquire into a complaint from any person a who has not been able to submit an information request because of non appointment of a public information officer b who has been refused information that was requested c who has not received response to his information request within the specified time limits d who thinks the fees charged are unreasonable e who thinks information given is incomplete misleading or false and f any other matter relating to obtaining information to the commission can order inquiry into any matter if there are reasonable grounds so more to power 
Three, while inquiring, the Commission has the powers of a civil court in respect of the following matters. A. Summoning and enforcing attendance of persons and compelling them to give oral or written evidence on oath and to produce documents or things. B. Requiring the discovery and inspection of documents. C. Receiving evidence on affidavit. D. Requisitioning any public record from any court or office. E. Issuing summons for examination of witnesses or documents. And F. Any other matter which may be prescribed. 4. During the inquiry of a complaint, the Commission may examine any record which is under the control of the public authority and no such record may be withheld from it on any grounds. In other words, all public records must be given to the Commission during inquiry for examination. 5. The Commission has the power to secure compliance of its decisions from the public authority. This includes a. Providing access to information in a particular form b. Directing the public authority to appoint a public information officer where none exists, c. Publishing information or categories of information, d. Making necessary changes to the practices relating to management, maintenance and destruction of records, e. Enhancing training provision for officials on the right to information, f. Seeking an annual report from the public authority on compliance with this act, g. Requiring the public authority to compensate for any loss or other detriment suffered by the applicant. H. Imposing penalties under this Act 5. And I. Rejecting the application. 6. The Commission submits an annual report to the central government on the implementation of the provisions of this Act. The central government places this report before each House of Parliament. 7. When a public authority does not conform to the provisions of this Act. The Commission may recommend to the authority steps which ought to be taken for promoting such conformity. Table 57.1 National Commission's Central Bodies and the Related Ministries SL No. Commission Body falls under 1. Central Information Commission Ministry of Personnel 2. Finance Commission Ministry of Finance 3. Union Public Service Commission Ministry of Personnel 4. Interstate Council Ministry of Home Affairs 5. Staff Selection Commission Ministry of Personnel 6. National Commission for SC's Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment 7. National Commission for ST's Ministry of Tribal Affairs 8. Central Vigilance Commission Ministry of Personnel 9. Zonal Council's Ministry of Home Affairs 10. Central Bureau of Investigation Ministry of Personnel 11. National Investigation Agency Ministry of Home Affairs 12. Commissioner for Linguistic Minorities Ministry of Minority Affairs 13. National Commission for Protection of Child Rights Ministry of Women and Child Development 14. National Commission for Backward Classes Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment 15. Central Commissioner for Disabled Persons Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment 16. Central Social Welfare Board Ministry of Women and Child Development 17. North Eastern Council Ministry of Development of the North Eastern Region 18. Central Administrative Tribunal Ministry of Personnel 19. National Commission for Minorities Ministry of Minority Affairs 20. National Human Rights Commission Ministry of Home Affairs 21. National Commission for Women Ministry of Women and Child Development 22. Good and Services Tax Council Ministry of Finance 23. Lokpal Ministry of Personnel 24. National Investigation Ministry of Home Affairs Agency 25. National Disaster Management Authority Ministry of Home Affairs 26. Attorney General of India Ministry of Law and Justice 27. Solicitor General of India Ministry of Law and Justice 28. Law Commission of India Ministry of Law and Justice 
29 election commission of india ministry of law and justice 30 delimitation commission of india ministry of law and justice notes and references 1 annual report 2018 to 2019 ministry of personnel government of india p144 to where the leader of opposition in the lok sabha has not been recognized as such the leader of the single largest group in opposition of the government in the lok sabha shall be deemed to be the leader of the opposition 3 the information commissioner is eligible for appointment as chief information commissioner but cannot hold office for more than a total of 5 years including his term as information commissioner 4 he is deemed to be guilty of misbehavior if he is concerned or interested in any contract or agreement made by the central government or participates in any way in the profit of such contract or agreement or in any benefit or emolument arising there from otherwise than as a member and in common with the other members of an incorporated company 5 the commission can impose a penalty on the public information officer at the rate of 250 rupee per day up to a maximum of 25000 rupees it can also recommend for disciplinary action against the errant official if you like this episode please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel sukriya so